Hi everyone, welcome back to video number two. It's been a couple hours and um, so I went up, had some lunch and visited with my wife and had a good time and now we're going to continue on to painting. Now before I leave, if it's going to be for just a few hours or so, what I do is I just lightly mist my palette with a little bit of water. It is uh, 16 degrees outside, very, very cold. So the heat's on running in through here and uh, that heat just absolutely blows right down over this area. So I just mist it lightly with some water and that's enough to hold it and keep the, the tops of these acrylics here wet for quite a while. As a matter of fact, you can still see some beads of water here. I just mist it lightly and it holds it. As a matter of fact, some of these colors here are still wet as well here when you missed it like that okay so and it's been a good two hours so now let's come in we you know it's up to you whether or not you've put on a coat of glazing medium or something I'm gonna come in and because I want to soften these edges work these edges and you know get this softer look out to here before I start applying some more darks and some more lights I'm gonna work my outside and I was thinking you know before I've showed you the darks and stuff but I do like this light dark color exchange right here of the white the white background on him so I'm gonna try that so I'm gonna take some extender here and just right up into this dirty area there though and I'm gonna take some white just kind of model that together and let's just look what is now the extender now you can also use open medium which keeps the uh, colors like this open medium here which will keep the colors thicker when <clears throat> excuse me, when you're going to paint down into this with this and you want this soft hair exchange here, what you want is the background color to be a little thicker and so it stops your stroke. So we'll put a bit of that off here like this and that would be good. That will pull you know this this way and let's just soften the exchange out here. So what I had done out here, of course, is I worked it really soft with color and so we'll just soften. I love all of Prima backgrounds, working of the backgrounds and stuff like that of, of this. Now, let's just pull some of this out just a bit, but I want this white and we'll add just a little bit of that open medium here. I want this white right here, a bit white, a bit wet for just a minute while I'm gonna work that wet edge. And of course, working the edge is up to you. Now, let's come back in here and, and this is my three quarter inch brush. Let's come back in here. Let's grab some of our white, some of our medium white, and some of that uh, nice raw umber here. And we'll bring this up, or actually push the value of it down here. Just a bit, not exactly the same, but and you can see, see the wet edge, see the softer wet edge that you can create there. And I'm just gonna, just work through this just a minute here, pull through. Now, a lot of times I like to pull out and leave it pulling out like this and keep that softness that way. And I'll work from the outside edge in um, here. So as you're reading this, the next, the next colors in here, you might put some, a little bit of the umber here. Let's come right here and a bit of the sienna into that as well and work just a few strokes of that through just to get a, some of that sienna color in there as well softening and then you have to decide that the outside here now i do like my filbert and i'll take some umber here maybe a little bit of open medium and i do like taking strokes like this with my filbert and lifting off slightly and as I get to that wet edge. And I'll leave some of that softness right there, but I'll pull some of these down and you can swing right over onto your chisel there to give some direction. So, um, or thin it out a bit if you want. Okay, so I'm gonna put some of that right out here and I'll reload pretty much for each mark here as, as I do this. And if you want more of a, I'll show you in just a minute. Let me put a few of these on here. So, and, but you see working that wet into wet gives you that softer exchange than what it is over here. You see the difference there? So, and 
it's very easy to come back and add this or you know do it again and and uh, soften it up even more and adjust it it's really an easy technique to do if you work that wet edge and especially if you do use the open medium now these wild and crazy funky brushes this is this is actually an old i don't know if i have mine here yeah this was a round brush here that i took out and i hit it with a hammer flattened it out and it, get, it goes like this. I use that all the time. So I created this brush. I hit it with a hammer and flatten it out. And then after I flatten it out, I take it and I start to uh, cut out. You can see some of the short hairs in here. I start to cut out some of the hairs. And what I do, and then I just kind of pull it all apart and make these, you know, like I did on the Jack Russell, the two hairs and some air brushes. And I'll put a little bit of this dark in like this. And this brush can be used to pull more of a hair look down like that. So you can get more of that, that look that you get here. Follow, and you can add some open medium. You can add some other mediums to it. But you can see you can get more of that individual hair look here. Let me move over. Getting in the camera there a little bit. Sorry. And uh, pull over a bit here and get some of that individual hair look. And you can uh, come back the other way and soften some of that out here, working back up, picking it back up, soften some of that out if you want here. Um, so this brush, as opposed to using a liner brush and going in there and working it, I'll use this brush to uh, get some more of the, the fur look to an area if I want that and make sure you add some of that open medium that causes it to slide a little bit but you want what's really important is where you're painting this down into some of this uh, you know some of his hair and stuff here where you're painting it down you want the whites that background color a little thicker so it stops some of that movement of this hair so and just work it a little, little bit here. So you see I have the softness and then I have more of an individual look to the hair. And, and you can do both or do whatever you like that, that feels more close or resembles your subject here. And uh, so that gives a, a nice look out here to this. Now, I like that hair look, but I do love working the colors here back and forth a few times with my filbert the filbert is my favorite of all time favorite brush to paint with so and i'll get a little thicker color here i want that right in there so like i said before you know in the first video with this next step we're going to go darker and we're going to go lighter as we build it now he's very warm in here still from that uh from that raw umber and i just might my raw umber is almost out here so i might have to get more but i'm just gonna put out a little more raw umber here for me here because i got a ways to go let's take that raw umber and let's add some open medium into it that's going to keep it nice and wet a little bit of violet and a little bit of blue that's going to make that real dark, cool color. And I always like to vary it a little bit. But some of that real dark, cool coming right in here. And we can drag. I like to use the chisel of the brush. Drag some of it out here. So you get that real wispy edge. It's edges, you know, beautiful paintings. Beautiful paintings that I have studied over the years. It's all about the edges, how you treat your edges and stuff. And that's what makes them really, really pretty. And just take your time here. Take your time. You can divide up, too. You can go back up into some of that sienna, that burnt sienna, and take some of that. Take some darks. Don't go out quite as far here. Try to follow. Try to get some of those nice curving contours that he has there. Okay, if you want to do a lot of drawing, 
you can thin the paint out, but make sure your background is thicker because that's what's going to stop the color, okay? So let's go through that again. Let's go over here. I'm going to take a little extender, a little, uh, this time I'm going to go a little darker over here. So I'll take a little umber and we can even add, the, the extender I like it because it slides, but we want to keep the color thicker. So I'm going to go through some medium white, some umber, a little bit of white here. And I want to keep this color a little darker over here, just a bit. And it's a good color to pull across over here. And let's just work this just a bit over here. Some of this, let some of this just come up into him here. This is going to allow some of that softness. Now, if you lose the edge a little bit, because I put that on really thick, you just can pull back just a bit to see where your first original you can just barely see it there, your first original colors, okay? And, but get brave with it. Now, let's take, we have some black, and we have some dark. Now, I, those are really kind of wispy, so I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, use some open medium, thin this out a bit, and just kind of whisper some of this first. And yes, I pulled up, you can see where I hit some of that light and pulled up, and you can just take your paper towel and take some of that off but I'm creating this this really wispy edge that's what I want to do right there so I'll pick up a little more here a little thicker and let's create that wispy little edge there we have some poles that are going to go out quite far but uh, which we'll take care of I'll back it out for that burnt sienna a bit this and you can again you can go back and forth see I can push into that edge to adjust some of that color there as well there's some of it that almost feels like it pulls down there slightly and you can also use your brush flat see how the flat will give a, a little different mark here so we can use our brush flat for some of those marks as well the fusions are really soft and do a lot of these kinds of marks for you you know pretty easy here okay so that creates that wispiness to it let's go then go to with a little more dark let's go to our filbert here and pull some of the shorter and, and watch your angles the, watch the angles here of this coming through trying I stroked it twice there and I try not to do that because see I picked up that light color and pushed it back in there so I try to reload each time for it and so I don't pick up that light color. As I get up here where the color is thinner, I can just use a little light pressure and I can just finish it off here, getting some of those little marks out there like that. That's pretty good. Just come close. Come close there. Get that wispy edge. Let's drop some of that down here, some longer ones, and just create, don't, don't stroke through too many times. They'll start to blend and become one. So you wanna, you know, work it a couple, you know, no more than, you know, remember what Sargent said, what I said in the first video, John Singer Sargent, the first power comes from the first stroke. So try not to stroke it too much more than that. You know, don't work it back and forth too much. It's going to blend. We don't want to blend it. We want to keep this nice, uh, this nice fur look to it. We don't want it to blend too much here, okay? So there's one look. And you can, you know, you can work it, bring it as close as you want. I don't, I think I'm getting pretty close to what I want. And I might use my two hair and some air brushes and finish some of it off here and that's kind of that's kind of nice and so if you want to get some more hairs to it some of that look you can just grab it like this and see you can get that little individual hair look there not too much just a few here there. Kind of bring that edge out. Let's put a few right out here. That might
might be a little too much. Here, just bring that edge in. And if you know, if you if you make a mistake, I kind of made it a little bit of a mistake there. You can paint it out like this, pull some of that color out, and I'll let little marks like this happen. That's just little, that's just the casual nature of it. And just stroke it again and see you'll get that that edge out there. This hair needs to come out a little bit more straight out there. Just like that. Some ideas of it there. That's pretty good. And then we'll come back and we'll go over here to our burnt sienna. Let's go over our burnt sienna side here. Maybe a little bit of our dark, a little bit of open medium. And let's just pull some sienna strokes down. This is a nice transit. And each time, touch over. Nice transition here. You don't want to go back and forth too many times because remember, you're now you're decorating, you're painting the, the hair. And so you want to be very, very controlled and very specific with what you do. And plan your stroke, plan your mark. Let's just, and up here I'm going to let it kind of fade away, so I'm just going to continue and pull that up there. But you see, you get a, 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 a softer look to it, and it's bringing it closer to him, what we want on him. I'll put some of those marks, right, I got that color right in here. I might even bring it across a little more than what it is on him, just to drive a little more interest there. Now we'll go over more towards an orange. So remember, we go darker, we go lighter. Let's get some of this yellow darulide, maybe a little, and some touch of the burnt sienna here. And work that. And again, work the strokes here so that they, and don't do it too many times, they'll blend. We want the marks. And so we can soften just a bit, but see that nice little pull down, the colors are, and you know, are not blending. They're in court, what I, what I call it is they incorporate, they work together, but they're not, but it, you know, going back and forth will blend it. And I don't want to blend it. I want them to incorporate. They slide over each other and pressure on your brush is really important. I use a very light pressure on my brush because too much pressure will make more hairs on the brush work and then they will blend and we don't want that. So we'll pull that down. Now let's uh, go over towards our medium white. I didn't even clean my brush. I just went right over towards our medium white. We'll add a little bit of white to this as well. We'll go lighter and warmer here. Pull some of this across, lift right up in through there. See, I get that little wispy edge. That's what I'm looking for. And if you want even more, use your two hair and some airbrush. But that's the kind of look here. Right across it. Here, touch into that. And see what I'm doing. See. And it's hard to see, but I did pick up burnt sienna on that. See, and you touch that edge. And so I tap it back to, to reincorporate that burnt sienna there so it's softer. And that blended right in there a little too much for me. So I can go back with some burnt sienna and do it. Or, you know, like what he has. Let me rinse this dark out of the brush. He has some air, some hairs coming from his chin right down there which are gonna cross over that. So we, uh, I'm just gonna go back to some of this and just restate that again, that area. You can see any of this, just kind of dragging over it a little bit. It's just gonna make beautiful little color marks and uh, it's, all, it's all gonna work. It's all real pretty, it's all gonna work. Let's just take a bit of the light just to show you. And I'll use, I use, when I'm gonna do more individual hairs, I'll use more of the edge of this brush here. And you can set that down and you can pull, see? And you'll get more of an individual hair, see? Here, so you use the corner of your little two hairs and some airbrush. 
we'll just put up and you can also use a small little liner brush and then I can push and take out any that I don't like in there and I got a little brush here right there and I like you know and that's really really detailed and you know so sometimes with a with an, a, a painting like this or painting an all the prima I won't go that detailed sometimes uh, you know, I will and he's coming together really fast and so sometimes I'll I'll take a little more time and put some of that extra energy into a really nice Painting here. Let's put some of that Right down here Let some of that sit so you can see different types of marks here let's um, and The thing is a, a real good thing to remember when you're doing these types of techniques is that when you're putting the hair on, or anything, like the background or anything like that, you want the color you're painting into to be thicker than the color you're creating the hair with. Always remember that. Now, why? So it stops it. It's like driving your car through mud. You, you know, you're going to be able to go so far because the, thick, the thicker the mud, the more you stop. So you want that stop. If you put on just real thin color, you're... you're uh, brush that thin color can't stop what's happening in your brush so and it's just going to continue on and continue on and so we don't want that really here I'm just going to soften this shadow right up in here see I can do it also with some uh, shadow and since I wanted that shadow all soft I didn't reload each time now I'll pick up here and let's create some of the Hair look here that's coming and I see that's not exactly the same mark I have here at this angle but I love the way it looks and so I'll leave it <laughs> so it's a little bit of different I'll leave it it's okay it's all right and we'll just light pressure here create some of the marks that we want here on him here with some little lighter color here like this there we go maybe a mark down see and I'll leave that little draggy light that's right there and you know sometimes I do what's called diminishing strokes is I'll put it on heavy like this and let the color run out of my brush as I pull and that gives you this really nice uh, look here let's do a diminishing stroke right up in here and we'll pull some of this angle out a little bit hit that other curvature there like that we got a i got a harsh line here and he's softer undulated color right there so i've got to get some of that burnt sienna and yellow you light yellow is just such a pretty color, right? Let's add some open medium to this. Nice thick coloring in here. Pull that down in there a bit. Let's um, maybe up into this corner here a bit. Right up there. A bit of the, forgot where I was there for a second. And that in there let's go walk down the darkness let's go into some umbers here nice thick paint pull that through did it twice shouldn't have done that here let's work that edge one more time here There's a little different look there to that. And <clears throat> we can go grab, get that open medium in there so it stays wet here for a while. It, it's a good look. It's a beautiful, softer look. You know, we'll do other animal portraits where we won't paint that softness of a look. But uh, we'll do it here. Show you this technique. It's a beautiful technique and it's acrylic that's the nice thing about it you know and it's a non-toxic acrylic so I can stick my fingers in it and uh, 
Let's go take some of that lighter. Restate some of that right in there. And if I'm just putting it on to soften an edge, I'll continue to stroke it, like walk it down. If I'm putting on hair or something like that, I would do one stroke at a time, see? Okay, now let's take, I wanna rework this area here. Now if I just put on more white, you're not gonna see it. So what I wanna do is I wanna restate some of the shadow that I see under there. And let's just grab a little bit darker grade and restate that real quick. And since I'm painting hair, we're gonna carefully pull each one. So you see this area, I can take it a little closer to what it looks like on him there. I don't need to copy it, I don't wanna do that, but I wanna show you guys how to slow down and create some of these looks. Let's pull that down. Let's go up a little lighter and soften that edge. And then we'll go even more towards the white, a little open medium. I feel it on my, a lot of people say, well, you know what, you got it. I feel it. I feel the difference between paint and then paint with open medium. And that will come with time for all you beginners, you know. Le really learning how to paint is learning to control that feeling of the paint, you know, on the surface. And, you know, that that's what I do is I'm feeling it on the surface and feeling it on my palette. And that's one reason why I love painting on glass palettes. It's one of my favorite surfaces to paint. But I also use these multimedias. And you want to use a surface that will allow you to emulate the feeling of the paint on that surface of your palette is feeling the the paint of your um, of the what's happening on on your subject here so that's the best way let's just put a little more light than what he has we'll bring his chest forward here just a bit more here just because that's a pretty little stroke. Now, I pulled out a little too far and made it look like a little fan in there. Do you see that? Did you go, David, you screwed that up? <laughs> oh, I didn't screw it up. We'll just, we're, we're professionals. We'll just redo it. Let's just take some dark and paint back up into it. So you can go the other way as well. You can go the other way. We'll pull down. Soften that exchange a bit. So I start to look sometimes in there to soften that exchange. You know, he has, and you can get super detailed, like he has a little bit more sienna in some of his marks there. So we can do that. Or we can just say, hey, that's really close enough. That's all you want to do. That's up to you. My job is to just show you and then let you paint him the way you want to paint him. Let's go umber and raw umber and burnt sienna and finish some of that shadow underneath his head there, right in there. That's pretty good. Okay, now, so his head comes in through here. This is part of his cheek. He's, that flowing motion is so important right there. And so I want to make sure I really kind of Get a good read on that. That's gonna be some yellows and some siennas. And I might, uh, what I'm gonna probably do is put it on and then come back and put some dark on it too. So, cause I wanna create, and you gotta look at this, it's almost an S. So I wanna come down with this S and flow that out. That's creating the side of his face here. You wanna create that flow and then we're gonna to have to shadow some of that. And then as it goes up a little higher, a little more, maybe a touch of white, a little more yellow, maybe a touch of white. Let's build that in. And it's gonna come out a little straighter here. There's the afternoon train going. Here we go. So we'll get some of that now. You can, 
you know, it, it's a little bit darker on some of him there. Now your your colors will darken, but let's just take a little dark and see. You just do this. Follow back the other way. Just light pressure, light pressure, and we can push back like this. Really light pressure. Just barely touch the surface here, and you push some of the the shadow right into that part of him. We can go a little more dark, a little more umber. It's really fun, guys, to paint like this. You can add just little marks of umber there. And you can come back and forth with the light and the dark and hit anywhere in there. Pressure and the amount of paint that's on the surface are the keys to some of this. And it's going to take some practice. Now, let's continue up that side. A little bit of open medium here. My paint's a little, I want it to be a little more sticky. And let's grab that S here, that S shape right there. Let's grab that in that's going to set his face a little wider, a little more up. Look for benchmark or look for ideas like it's going to, so I'm I'm right down here, down to the low part of his eye. His over here is up to the upper part of the eye. So I have to bring in some color here, up and down this way, and maybe some edges there to get that color up and as high as what's on him and get this color up and around the top part of his eye here as well. And you can see just coming through this time how much softer he's getting here. Let's grab some of this lighter, kind of a gray. Now, you can do it with your two hairs and some airbrush, or you can set it down kind of flat. And I know when I do this, I know when I do this, I'm going to be putting on a little bit too much because my brush is just going to do that. And so what I do is I'll put on a little bit of that color, then I'll take my dark, use kind of my chisel, and don't paint too long because you'll make a lighter gray, but use this to take some of it out. Just work through it so you go back and forth with the light and the dark and you start putting on some of those lighter marks to it. Now, if your lighter marks flow too much, your color's too thin. Look at, how, look at the thickness of all my colors that I have here. They're thick and it's also a little stiff. It's not loose. That's what's causing it to stick right where I put it is that the thi the the looseness or the 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 uh, thickness of the paint is what's causing it to stick right where I put it here so keep your colors thick as you do that and it's all again consistencies and stuff here let's work some of this up a little higher now see it's too much and I know that I'm just gonna go ahead and work it and I'll come back with some dark nice thick dark lift off into it here don't do, uh, don't do too much Dave and we'll go maybe a little burnt sienna and some of that color here, coming back out so we get a different little coloring there a little bit of burnt sienna on the edges there there we go getting some of that in some of that color some of those color marks let's go a little bit more yellow stuff up here a bit more yellowy orange that's just a touch too yellow here and you know if you if uh, you don't get as close which you, a lot of times doesn't happen you don't get as close as you want with this layer you do it again there are some you know when I'm working in an expensive commission I will do it for, like I said four or five times let's take a little bit of dark here and just lift up lift up into that just light, I mean, you're just letting the tip of the brush 
just catch the, the paint, the surface. And that just starts your really soft look. And I want to, I want to, I want to move, make some movement here. So I'm going to add some more open medium and I'm going to thin the paint in my brush a little bit with some open medium. And I want to capture that thinner movement. See, now my color doesn't have very much power, but I'm capturing a better movement. Now I paint it out too much because that's exactly what I do most of the time. And I'm going to come back with it again. So I'm just lightly and going back and forth like this. See how I can get a little closer to his look this time. So a little closer. I'm catching the movement that I want here. And since it's all soft, I'm not, I don't have to redress my brush each time. But if I'm doing individual marks of hair, I'll be redressing my brush each time. Maybe a little bit more of a white into that, a whiter gray. A little cooler here. Hits that color. Yeah, that's a better color on them. There we go. And I can lightly, 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 little pressure, pull down just light to go over the edge of that, just a touch to set those marks. Here. And again, you can, you can work through that again if you want to work it again. Let's add slightly darker, cooler, just little marks right in here. Now again, see, and this is pretty dry right in here. I feel it on my brush. It's dry. So it is going to impart a lot of color and take a lot off. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to take some open medium and I'm going to take some dark, put that in my brush and pull right through it to soften it into place. And since I'm softening, I don't necessarily need to restroke each one, but I'll soften that. And then I'll go back and reset just a little bit here and reset. Let's get some more of that real dark. Some open medium, blue, violet, open medium, umber, dark, dark. Let's set some of that cool or dark right in here. And let some of that come up just a bit into that mark so it starts to catch that look. You can use the chisel of your brush. To get a different kind of mark, you can go to a smaller brush. I like to paint, like I've said so many times, with as large a brush as possible. Let's just pull a little dark right in there. A little bit of dark through there just to put a few marks of that in there. Maybe that's a little too light right there. Push that out. Let's um, get that curvature. That curvature that's right there. I don't have it quite enough. So we'll go, let's put some, and if I want to do it just a little, I make sure I thin my color out a bit with some of that open medium or, but see, it's nice and thick, but it's, it's thick, but it's still a little transparent. Okay. So I don't wipe out everything I do. I'm looking for the movement. That, that my brush mark has got to get this area here. Right in there. There we go. Gets that a little closer. He's a little, and this is where your eye also starts to get a little more fine tuned. I could use a little deeper dark, right up like that. There. And, uh, Maybe a little more dark pulling out right in here, which frames his eye socket. I got a little heavy right in there before. And uh, a bit more dark right around this 
eye socket down here. We've got to build that eye socket up a bit more. It's almost there, but not quite. I'm going to reset this a little lower, that light. A little bit lower. So you see, I, I can work this. So, I, like I say, I've got a lot in my brush there. So I put on too much. I don't worry about it. I go take the other paint. Light pressure, light pressure. When you're painting out, it is light pressure. So you don't eliminate everything. It's just barely touching the surface. Here. There we go. Maybe a little shorter one there. Shorter mark. That's good. But you can look at little little colors, little marks that are helping his expression, which is always going to be around the eyes. This nice dark over here that's up over the top part of his eyelid. That's going to help his expression a lot. Anything that's really up over the top of the eyes here, that's what gives the expressions to the face. So you really want to make sure you get those upper lines there really nice. That's the expressions of the face. Expression lines here. Let's just pull that down. That's pretty good. A little more dark here. Down. Clips his eye just a touch there. It's pretty good. A little more. And see, I look, and this is very much him. He's got a real dark right there. Nice, strong, dark. Nice, strong, dark. Right there and there. And we really want to bring that out because that's part of his expression here. There and right here. Right there and right there. Look for those those marks, guys. That's that's what you're looking for. The marks that are giving him his expression. Now I need a slightly warmer, yellower little mark right out here. We'll put this in, I'll lighten it up, and then we'll paint it back. So a little bit there, a little bit lighter there, and I can use some touches of that light here. I clipped in just a touch too much. But I do like to do that. I do like to paint back and forth my edges until I get the expression the way I like it. Now see, he's coming closer, but he could be a little bit darker on some of those areas. It's really, really dangerous to do it with his big brush. But I'm living that life right now, so we'll just, we'll go for it. Yeah, let's take a little bit more dark. And see, my paint is really thick and kind of sticky. And that's when I, if I'm painting a dog that, and I'm not using my two hair and some airbrush, and I'm painting a dog that I want, you know, to get it with a fusion, I use my colors really sticky so they stay exactly where I want them. And I get a, a different look that way, too. And I like that. Let's put that mark down. Lift up for the edge there. A little mark here, out that way. Here. That's good. Let's get this nice dark right out here. Just lift off. I'm just going to do a soft edge over here with just a fusion, I think. A little bit more dark. There, there, that's pretty nice. Let's um, get even more dark, a little thicker, coming right into here. And then we'll thin this out a bit here and just lightly curve it slightly here, pulling down which is the motion that's on that side of his face, will help narrow down his face. And um, maybe we'll restate 
this is starting to dry up here. Now, I don't want to really, you could use extender like here, okay, to keep, keep it wet, but then that thins the paint too, so you got to remember that. And if you thin the paint too much, it'll flow too much, move too much. When you're painting hair, you don't want that paint to flow too much. Unless you're using a liner brush, then you want it to flow. But when you're using a big brush, you want it to grab, stick, and, and then that's what gives you that fracturing off of the color, okay? So consistencies, let's put a little light right down like he has there. There we go. And uh, let's bring that down. And you can, you could use a liner brush or like I could use some of my two hairs and some airbrush here. Just some of this air, just a bit. To put in just a few little hairs here. And since that ear is so wet, see, I can just lift it off. Just light little hair, look. Let's go a little more light. Spread it out. So you got just little hairs. There we go. That's a that's not a bad look there. Pull some of those down. There. And that'll work. So you can there you can see there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Let's bring some of that right in there. Soften that a bit. Nice colors, fun. Fun coloring on him. Fun fun to paint. You know, I used to, when I started out, I'd look at a dog with all of this, you know, what I what we call this mosaic of tones, and it scared the heck out of me until I started painting this way. Now I, I just say, oh, yeah, okay. It's a weaving, I kind of think of it as a like weaving of the colors, you know. But the pressure, it's, it's finding the right brush and then pressure. You know, when I'm creating hair with this little fusion brush, I like to use very little pressure here on the brush and follow that contours there, just like that. Now let's, uh, let's continue on since that's wet there. And we'll start to lighten and a little warm, so a little yellow. I mean, excuse me, a little medium white and white. Let's build that up on him a bit more here. And let that just, see, I can just let that diminish down in there and build that up. It goes a little heavier up at the top by this mark. So nice rounding to the forehead here. Gives a good rounding to the forehead there, like that. Maybe bring that dark down just a bit, okay? It's a little different. That one's a little shorter thing. This has an extra little bump, but I don't worry about that. That's not, the viewer won't pick that up too much. And so there's some things you're just, you get close and then there's some things you just gotta let go. You just gotta let it go. So this this mixture of some of this, not mix, I not mix it, but modeling of some of this is doing wonderful things here for his face. Well, I'm gonna put a little more texture right up here, right as this is gonna come into his nose. Maybe blur that edge a bit right there. And now, it's this, you can see it really light right there. Do you see that? And then it's back to more of a half tone. It's a toned down. And so it's a little, just a little lighter, but it's not as light as that. So I'm going to drop this down. Remember, I'm a tone painter. I like to follow the tone. So I'm going to drop that tone down probably a little more than that. Let's do a little better job of that tone, Dave. And pull that in. That's better. 
and work it. And, and sometimes on some paintings, I'll express the tone a little more than what I see or is just to give a little more interest to the, to the uh, subject. So, you know, there's a bunch of different ways. Now I'm gonna take a pure white right here and hit that area one more time, just boom. Right there, maybe a mark or two right like this up that side because this is a nice interest area on him and I really want to capture it. So see all that textures and that, that bumpiness there kind of gives it more, gives him more character. And I'll do that right up here too, just boom. Try to leave some of that mark there. And it was, since I lightened that now, this will dry down a bit. Oh, dang, why'd you do that? There we go. Um, you can, that'll dry down a bit, but that makes this look just a touch dark. So I'm just gonna add just a little more light with that gray color right in there like that. Just a bit more light. Maybe come down, hit a few little things there. Let's put a mark of that very light right out here. See what that's gonna go like. If we like that, <clears throat> and I do, maybe um, just a touch darker right down here, just right on the edges of it to soften that tone out. We can pull out to give us, just lift the pressure, use the chisel. This is still wet right here, very wet. And because I used that open medium, and so I can just pull some of that little hair right there, and that gives us room to put some of that other hair in there. But you can see now, coming through, he's a lot softer again. I'm not, this is, this is tacky right here, so it's, a, it's actually a perfect time to go back and revisit this right here. So I'm gonna take some yellow oxide and some of my color here, we'll use some white with that. We'll add some open medium. So that bottom is sticky, so it'll grab, but I wanna get some light movement here, right in here, right up in here. Get some of that light shifting color and see it's sticky so I can push it a little bit. Sometimes I like to do that. It's a little different look. But we'll go a little heavier here. Right here, pull. And if you pull, you know, from the shadow to the light, you'll drag that shadow into that area, which is kind of what I'm trying to do. Let's put a bit of that mark right up here which helps form the side of this nose. Curve it slightly. There. We'll have to put some more color in there, but that curves it slightly. Down to the corner of his mouth, going slightly more sienna, burnt sienna, here. There we go. And you can, you know, you can take, like I said, some of that reverse, pull that in there. I can uh, take some of that light yellow, yellow, some light, right in my two hairs and airbrush here. And just lightly, that's gonna be a little too light. Let's darken it down just a touch. Okay, and pull that through like so on the other one where you see a few hairs, you can just do this lightly and pull that through and give that little look of that hair. That's up to you how much you want to do. Or you can use a little liner brush. I don't like to use a liner brush. I love the paintings when they're like that. Now, in doing that, I messed up that side not messed up, I gave myself the opportunity to redo that side right here, that pulling right up into here. And I wanna get that, I wanna get that swirl kinda correct because that's what's 
giving the side plane of his face. So I want to get that swirl right here. So let's go back to some sienna. And again, open medium keeps that color nice and thick. Here we go. Just like that. But like you see, you can work that back and forth. And let's just put a little touch of those lights right out here. That's really neat. Little burnt sienna in it. I like that little bit of light. See, like right in there. And then grab some of your umber and stuff. And remember what I did, light pressure. Just paint right through it and it'll incorporate it into him there. Makes it look like you know what you're doing. There. And a uh, little bit. I'm going to redo this feeling of this eye socket here. There. And uh, he has, and it's hard, it's really hard to see on the photo. And there's one reason why I like to go back up and look at that big one. But you can see his lower lid on the uh, big photo there. A nice soft gray that's just maybe half a value lighter than the gray that's there now. Let me grab my stick using my smaller... And this is where you can push that lower lid on right there and give him that extra little bit. We just see it a little bit. You don't see it really there, but, and I'm gonna take a, that small synthetic brush here and just add a few little color marks there around. And I always go back and reset my dark because this dark right here is so important, it sets the expression. Usually I do it several times. Here. But you can see he's coming closer and closer. But the big thing is when I start to, you know, your big takeaway here for this is, as I start the details with this particular technique, I really go to thick paint. Thick, sticky paint. That's really important for setting this on him. Here. There we go. And, uh, yeah, there's a few little things over there can be a bit more. That, that arch on his eye there is so important. Let's go back to our super dark. Dark, dark, dark color. And let's get that arch back up over here. This gives him his happy face. Right there. Okay. Really important. Make sure, like, uh, things that can happen here is you get your eyes maybe a little too oval and stuff like that. So you have to look at that. But look at the the width of these uh, lower lids and stuff pulling around. This has to go a little wider there. And I need that other eye just a touch darker. So I'll work. And I like that always to be a little more thin whenever I'm almost like a glaze. So I like to stroke over it and stroke over it a couple times until I get it to the correct look of it and that's pretty good for him now we have the mouth the tongue and uh, some of the front of him here and his nice dark this is my smaller synthetic while I have that I look over to my sketch and I see exactly how this little nostril should go there and this one is right in here like that and so we're gonna work the nose and Sometimes when I'm close with the nose, I'll thin out some of that dark. And remember, just like we paint over the eye to shave it, I'll, I'll start to work some thinner color several times. The nose I always treat a little different than some of the other things. And it's textured, it's bumpy. It usually has some shines because dogs' noses are wet. And... Push 
push this right up get that filter in there a little bit more right there and I look over you know I look over to that sketch that we built in Photoshop that's the greatest place to look because it shows you more than what you can see on just the uh, the photo you know it just shows up so much better I'm gonna take a bit of this dark and add just a few small marks that I see on the other guy there there we go bring that up that's pretty good you can use that anyway we got to fix this ear over here don't let me forget that sometimes I get so wrapped up into an area I'll forget the other parts and then I finish the video and go whoops <laughs> you know so if I forget that you tell me so we'll uh, put this dark Got to get this nice mark down here slightly that angle, which sets that eye socket back there just a bit. And maybe a little bit more wide width of the dark right out here. And again, there we go. And uh, yeah, that's going well. And sometimes I'll just do that dark, just kind of thin, you know, as I work through some of these areas, a thinness, just as a little glaze. That's another way you can do it with over some of these lights and see the modeling that it starts to add. So you use it thin many times. And just back, back, back. And you can, it's like a little glaze glazing the color. That's another way to do it. And I set way back on my brush here so that I uh, just lightly touch the surface here. There we go. Like that. And I'm going to create, there's a very important area that I just noticed and um, I'm going to clean my brush here. And I don't have it I don't have it correct. See the swoop that comes down through here? And we need a, 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 a basically a cornering stroke right down here that stop, that short, that takes his muzzle into his face. And so you can see that. See that little bit of dark right there? Those are the, see how, can you see that? I got it too sloped right there. And that's the little bit of dark right there. Do you see that? And so I'm gonna take a, and I did that all on purpose so I can show you guys. But sometimes, you I mean, you're working on this and you don't see it. That's why I say you got to give yourself some time. I'm going to thicken this up a bit. And I'm going to just, I'm going to follow that. And then I want to go down to right about the corner of his, of his nose right down. I mean, his mouth right here. And then I want that to swoop out into that. So I need that shutting off mark right there. That, you see the difference? that starts to make his nose. And this is a little sharp right here. So we're just gonna pull that out. Little work the color across, just a touch. Okay. And it's not too bad. There is kind of a little mark, a little suggestion of a mark there. The rest of that's not too bad. I could have a little bit more of a highlight of that yellow right in there. Don't, and stop short of that corner mark we just put on there. And now it's a little big, but you see, as you're looking at this, you, your eye starts to pick up some more things. And, and then there is the, there is um, the feeling that you put it away for a while and then come back and look at it. Now, you know, artists dis differ on that. You know, Sargent and stuff, the one that I really follow, didn't believe in that. Others do, that I follow, do. And so, you know, a lot of other beautiful painters say, oh yeah, because you won't see stuff. You get blinded by it for a while and you won't see stuff. And um, so that's kind of up to you. Oh, I wanted, before I left for lunch, I was going to fix that and I didn't. That uh, catch light 
Well, we're not quite, or just about two hours now into the painting. That's not really too bad. We're painting like this. You know, two to three hours to get it, a nice one like this done. And you'll get faster and faster as you get better at seeing the colors and tones. Let's get some of that fleshy kind of, some of the siennas and yellows into some of this light. Well, we have that there, and let's just work that to a smaller, lighter edge there one more time. Don't want to get it too much, too white. So you keep that flesh tone in there. Just a smaller, little, smaller, lighter touch gets that nice little, that nice little uh, highlight into it. Just a touch lighter pink here. A little red into this. Blur the edges just a bit. That's the thing I always, always tell everybody, blur the edges a bit onto, when you're away from the focal point of the eyes, blur the edges a bit. The tongue here, you'll pull down slightly. It gives the motion of this coming down out of his mouth. There. And uh, could have a little bit of red, a little bit of that quinacridone. We haven't used that quinacridone. Let's just drop that right into this. It's a little cooler, almost a red violet right in there. That's a pretty little color. It's a little bit more violet. Let's get brave. Then we'll take it off. Here we go, just a little bit. A little bit. There. Don't want to get that too violet or too pink. That tongue there. And, um, yeah, you can use, um, some of your two hairs brush and pull some of that into this lower chin area here. And then we'll come back with a little more light in some of it. Just little touches here. Brings that up a bit, a little bit lighter. Got a little extra flesh color in there, but that's okay. That flesh is the kind of the peachy kind of color. There we go. And then soften that. Right, very light pressure with your brush. Let's get, I got too much white in my brush. So take that out, put a little open medium, keep the color thick. Let's grab a, thin it just a bit here. Yeah, that's a good color. Thin that, and just pull over that a bit. We'll put some down to the tongue, pull over that a bit. There. And maybe the edge there. A little turn there on him. That's kind of neat. We can reach up by the nose here, pull some of that down. He's uh, got quite a bit of dark, a little bit more of a clear dark, and I'm gonna use my smaller brush. Very dark here to um, really get that nice dark depth right in there before it comes out onto the tongue right there. Grab that. Now, let's use some of that real dark here. Again, right up under the nose. Start finding the, start hunting out the dark areas on the nose. We'll go to a lighter. Let's take some of that dark, touch of the blue, touch of our lights. His, his shine on his nose is picking up the camera stuff here a little bit, which is a little bit more blue. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. We could actually add blue, more blue into our painting of him if we wanted, but I do like these kind of colors. So, yeah, that's hitting pretty close. Let's lighten that up a bit. Right across here. 
we go. And uh, maybe pull that curve with this right down here. There we go. And half tone, a little bit of the, of the uh, burnt sienna in it. As we pull down this side here, you'll see some of that sienna, some of that burnt sienna coming in the front part of the nose there. See, just a bit of it. So we'll use some of that in, right into some of this light. Don't mix it up real well so it comes off slightly different. There. And a little bit coming down here. There we go. And you do have to have, and I, it shows it on that drawing, that nice center line that divides his nose there we want to make sure we have that and that bit of shadow that forms underneath there that's pretty good there and then it's just hunting down the little lights and darks and half tones and you refine it as much as you want I'm not going to do a tremendous amount because I think it's enough to say he has a nose I need a little more light down the front here though Build that front of that nose up a bit more. There. That's pretty good. And I could have, I can actually accentuate it a bit. That light, you see right across the front top of it there. Could have that a bit more right there. That's not too bad here. Now, and of course, you know, how much you want to do in there, that's up to you. You know, I'm going to thin this super dark out so I can do just a touch of drawing with it but I don't want the color to be too extreme so I thin it just a bit so it's almost like drawing with a glaze almost and I'm just gonna kind of push in and out here and add some final little dark details back in there sink his tongue into his mouth um, dark here, right up there that makes that tongue come forward there maybe a bit more of a line here to come out and down that's pretty good I could have a touch of this sienna here in yellows siennas and we'll work just a bit here softens that color exchange right there see that so overall that's coming pretty good here I could have some more little hair kind of things there and you can do that with a liner brush if you want because you can because we'll use a liner brush maybe on to his whiskers and stuff here so um, but I need to um, let's get that dark violet here with that color a little bit more right in here in the deep part of the nostril so very important there to keep that and <clears throat> a real dark underneath here so I'm using my smaller this is my smaller number four synthetic uh, synthetic brush synthetic filbert which works great for little details like this Claire, give him a little bit more of a snappy to his eye there, a little more contrast, and uh, that's coming pretty good. And you almost let me forget that other ear there. Let's take some of our open medium, some of that nice, real dark color here, and let's just work. Yeah, that's a real beautiful dark. Work that through here now you can also thin and use on when you get up towards the edge of those other colors here and kind of like a glaze you know leave that light edges of that warmer umbers that we first did and that works that looks really nice as well it's all up to you but you see 
when I teach, what I, what I like to do is show you guys all different kinds of ways. And some ways will be easier for you. Some people will like one way more than another. And, uh, but you know, you should try all so you know what you can, what you like. You should try all kinds of stuff. I've spent my whole life doing nothing but study and painting techniques. And, um, so I need uh, a little bit more of the flat part curvature right in there to get that side of the face there. And I think that's pretty darn good. You know, it's uh, right up in here. I could intense or darken that shadow, pull that part of his face forward. Um, there is little things like a little bit more shadow that comes off this eye that comes off this corner and comes down just a bit that helps that side over there look watch your shadows this is out a bit far so we'll just push in a little bit there and uh you know you can use the edges here to create little uh, very clear, very precise little edges will give a lot of interest to your your animal here. Let's just pull some of that out a bit. So that looks pretty good. Let's see. All the way right down here. I really like, I have this big monitor right here so it shows what you're looking at when I'm painting. And I really like to step back and look at this because that camera sits back. So what you're seeing there is the camera is sitting back about almost eight feet, which is what I like the, the uh, um, painting to look at because into the gallery, it's about eight feet. And so that's what you're seeing is the, is it at about eight feet. And um, so I'd really like looking at that and starting to evaluate it because that's what it's going to hang like. And I'll see, like when I look at that and I see that, I say, oh, I see a tiny little shine and I have it, but not near. Right here on the inside corner of this nostril right here, there's a little bit more of a light. And see those little things like that, those little corners of the nostrils and stuff will pick up little light. Do you see that right in there? Just a little bit of that. And mine's a little bit lighter, but that'll dry down. It's it's fabulous. Okay. You got to have fun with this, guys. I have a lot of fun. You know, I spent so long learning so many of these things and traveling around the world and studying and going to museums around the world, all around the world, and um, and seeing some of these things. And I do love sharing it. Now, this uh, and I start to look at things, and this is where I don't I don't have it here, but this is where that little plastic will tell you are you off on your eye a little bit, and I feel like he is just a bit it was a bit too round, too oval there, so that works there. But that's that's pretty good. Now uh, let's see if I got my if I remembered to grab my liner brush which I may not have I may have to oh yep I have okay so your liner brush this is a, a fusion liner brush and I'm going to use some light and then when you want to draw really a lot of detail you want the colors really thin you want less than you want it thinner really than an inky consistency here so we'll go and very very thin use yourself a nice um, nice bridge here. Now, it is safest. This is wet still over here. It's tacky, but it's not like completely wet, but it's tacky. And it's safest to let this uh, dry before you go do this. But he had, and I use just, I lightly, see how I go with this? We used to always call this confidence strokes. And I'm, what I'm doing is slowly moving forward until I find the surface. And there it is. And then this allows me to pull out and do some of the ideas of the of his whiskers and stuff here. And he has one, two, three, four. No, don't do that. 
Don't go counting whiskers. There was a time I would. I would go in there and count whiskers. But I want to make these different lengths, some of these a little bit longer here. Some of them a little shorter. Some of them collide together here. Watch the pressure on your brush and just start adding some of these. There'll be little ones here that will uh, come out. You can blur some, which is what I like to do for ones that are further back. So we get a little bit of some differences here. You can push some smaller ones over the edge of his muzzle there, anywhere. So you can bring some of that down through here. Just little areas, remember we said we could do that over here before. Let's reload our brush. The paint will start to dry a bit, and then it won't flow as nice, so make sure that you, every once in a while, you might have to come back and wet it up again. Let's pull a couple across here so that doesn't look just stripey, so it gets a little different here. There we go. And um, on the other side here, though, isn't that funny? On the other side here, though, you see it as shadow, and you also have the part of the whisker there that is kind of shadow. So we'll take just a bit of our dark here that touch some of these areas here. Dapple him up for some of those areas of whiskers. There, like that, okay. And then we'll grab some water, some of our dark here. Let's go uber dark, a little dark. And then we'll just put some small ones right over here. And notice how I stop breathing. <gasps> yeah, I think I'll do that, stop breathing here. Just some small little lines. Yeah, and uh, just a few of them here, but you know that they'll look that you know people. Some people will look for these, and they need to be there. A few of them, you know, we a lot of times when I'm painting an Alla Prima dog, I won't do it. I won't put the whiskers on and stuff. But you do see them on him, and it is part of his character. Just like you have some real light. Let's just leave that darkener brush. We'll come over here, so it's just a little different. Add some water. A little different color, not quite as bright. Maybe also a little bit violet there. And uh, you don't want a huge difference here. That might need just a touch of umber. Darken it down just a bit. Just so it's a little lighter than what you're working on here. And let's just add a few little marks of those. And then you can always soften it down just by touching your finger slightly. There, okay? Just... Uh, and I want a little more umber, a little bit darker, maybe a little bit of this color in here. Soft color edges. Some of these little guys here are just great. That's a little too much even, so we'll, there we go. Just like that. Let's take a bit of yellow and sienna. Just a bit. Work that. That looks pretty good. Now, I could, little areas that I look at, um, you know, as I, as I see little uh, areas of detail, like I could take a bit of a red and yellow, which is a fleshy color, which, you know, dogs have that on their, starting into their mouth and stuff, and we can add just a little bit that's a little light so a little more sienna red yellow some sienna and right around you'll see some of that right around in here changing altering between the flesh tone and some of the dark tone and so you can do that and just alter around here a bit it's all just how much detail you want to 
given to your uh, to your animal here. But it's kind of fun. And then that's uh, about all I'm going to uh, really do. I'm going to bring this down just a bit here. That's about all I'm going to uh, do on him because that's about all he needs. And I think, yeah, that's a that's a light bit of his tongue right here. So, and I see it really clearly on the monitor. So I look up to that monitor there and you see this little area really clear. And so that's when I, you know, when I uh, don't know exactly, I'll go back to refer to that monitor. And yeah, you see that pretty clearly. As a matter of fact, you see just a bump of that tongue going right up over that that uh, edge and that tongue, now that you look at that monitor, you can see that tongue actually sits right on top of that tooth there. So it's nice to have that monitor to refer back to because it's big and you can see details really easy and you can get your dog a little closer to what he wants to be. I think I'm, I'm pretty good though overall. I could use a little more warm yellow and stuff and this is where I will put it away now for a bit and I probably will look at this again but a little more warmth right in through here I always check around the eyes and everything you know am I going to do any more to the outside here you know I kind of really like that light spot you know you could you could all prima up a little bit more I might uh, just I might just uh, put a little bit more, um, a little bit more light here. Let me rinse this out. What are you, uh, are you feeling a little jealous? Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah, you can come up here, come up here. <laughs> She's feeling a little uh, jealous and left out that I'm not painting you. Yeah, you're about that color. You're about that color. <laughs> this is my kipper. She's my baby girl and her sister's around here sometimes. You see them all running around. Let Papa finish this, this minute. Um, you see them all running around. But I might take a bit of that light, you know, running through. Yes, I know. So, and I might just intensify that just a bit more. It all depends on, you know, what you want to do. That is your painting. But I do like that little bit of light right there. I love that exchange right there. That's, that's kind of neat. And I might get just a bit more heavier light stroke right in here, which really comes forward brings this part of his whole face forward here that light just like I did right up there brings that whole part of his face forward so and I have him just a little hairier than that guy is there but overall I'm very very happy with him I could have a there see you just look at that there's just a tiny bit more light right there on the edge of that nostril as you as you're finalizing stuff you'll start to pick up little things a little bit more a little bit more but at some point you got to call it done and we're two and a half hours into this painting so I think we did pretty good here we'll just bump a little shine right there on that nostril touch a bit of that color right in there right in there just a little bit there and I think that'll that'll be good I'm gonna leave that light you could put uh, you know a darker color more of your umber a little bit more like right down here um, do we want to I don't know let's I kind of like that let's just take a look because we can always take some of that off I'll add some extender here so that it's uh, soft yeah that's kind of nice we'll push that right into some of that that is kind of nice so we'll just pull that off over here that's up to up to you we'll let that warm up lighten up just a bit here so a little more medium white grays right up over here as that comes down i like i like a little bit of movement into my background especially the animal colors 
that works pretty good. Sometimes, and I'll just show you this, sometimes it's, I'll do this especially in portraits, I'll take some kind of contrasting stroke here and pull down like that, which kind of closes off this side of him like that, see? And uh, that's another thing, and you leave it very, very sketchy. And we could take some of that and just kind of pull out down here like that, leaving that just kind of sketchy like that. Maybe, maybe bring out a little bit of his back here like that. Just an idea, you know. If you don't like it, take it off or don't do it, okay? There you go. Now I can't get close to the thing. She's laying down right there. Thanks very much for joining me. For all your membership, I'll put that, we'll paint number, uh, letter D. We'll paint that one too. I'll get that up in the next couple of days. I've got a, a another wildlife antelope dashing through the snow we're going to be doing. I've got a winter uh, landscape painting we're going to do. And then i got another vase of flowers. Some of you really wanted to do another vase of flowers. We're going to do that one as well. So we'll continue on. I'll put up some more, those of you in the membership, I'll put up some more dogs and see which ones you want to paint. You get to choose which ones I'm going to paint, okay? All right. And uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell so you're notified when I come out with new videos. And uh, thanks very much, everyone, for joining me. And if you have a comment or a question or something like that, just uh, put that down below. And questions and stuff, I try to get to, I try to... Uh, yeah, I try to answer you and stuff as soon as I can. Can't always get to them right away, but I try to get to them as soon as I can, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Oh, those of you that are on the, in the membership, look over to the community page, and I will have the final photos, reference photos, and I'll even put up the uh, um, the Photoshop one up there so that you can paint that, okay? All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you in the next one.